This series of videos covers decompression theory and the RDP. The RDP exam in the PADI instructor exams has a few questions that require a knowledge of decompression theory in order to answer correctly. The series of videos can all be found together at my website uh, on the link goprocaribbean.com slash decotheory. What am I going to look at in this video? In this video, I'm going to look at half times. It was hard to decide whether to cover half times or compartments first. I decided to cover half times in the first video, this one, and compartments in the second video. The two things are very, very closely related. It's important to understand both to understand decompression theory. Once you understand what both these things are, then it's critical that you understand an M value. Half times and compartments don't really make any sense at all. They're very, very theoretical. But once you understand what an M value is, half times and compartments start making sense and decompression theory starts making sense. So I will cover each uh, of these things, half times, compartments and M values in separate videos, allowing you to watch them in bite-sized chunks. And once you understand that, you will understand why we have a WXYZ rule and also the difference between the Navy tables and the RDP it's differences between Navy tables and the RDP that you are most likely to get at least one, if not more, questions on in the RDP exam. And you can only understand and explain the differences if you understand all these different things. Nitrogen absorption is what all of these things are actually about. Right now, we are in equilibrium. The amount of gas dissolved in our tissues is equal to the pressure surrounding us. Assuming we haven't recently been on a dive and we are sitting at sea level, we would have one atmosphere of gas dissolved within us, one atmosphere of air dissolved within us. If we were to descend to a depth of 100 feet or 30 meters, we would be under four atmospheres of pressure and we would no longer be in equilibrium. If we spent long enough at depth, at 100 feet, we would eventually, after a very, very long time, uh, become uh, in equilibrium again. We would have four atmospheres of dissolved gas in our body. It would depend what the gas we were breathing was as to what constituted that gas. But assuming that we were breathing air, we would have four atmospheres of air dissolved in our body. And as everyone knows, the majority of air is nitrogen, approximately 79%. The rate at which we absorb gas gets slower and slower. You can think of the absorption of nitrogen as uh, similar to a hot dog eating contest. Uh, at the beginning of the contest, you see people managing to eat a, an awful lot of hot dogs in a very short time. But as time goes on, they struggle more and more to manage to swallow another hot dog. Likewise, on a dive to a single depth, uh, the longer you stay there, the less nitrogen you will be absorbing with every passing minute. And this is what we are really talking about when we talk about half times. Now, the perfect way to picture the way that your body absorbs nitrogen is to picture the way a tea bag reacts when it's put in hot water. The way the tea infuses into the water is classic half time behavior. As we see this tea bag enter the water, we see the tea rapidly infusing into the water. The clear water is rapidly going an orangey brown color. And as time passes, the change in color, uh, the change in the amount of tea that is infused into the water slows down and slows down and slows down. So the rate of infusion with every passing minute is decreasing. What you do need to understand is that different tissues in your body absorb gases at different speeds. And the speed at which any tissue absorbs gas would be called its half time. So the half time is the rate at which different tissues absorb nitrogen. Or said another way, the rate at which gases dissolve into different tissues. 
the actual definition of a half time is the time it would take in minutes for that compartment to go halfway between starting pressure and the new pressure being the pressure at the depth you are diving to. The absorption of nitrogen uh, will actually happen exponentially but for the purpose of decompression modeling it is assumed that a compartment will reach equilibrium and therefore stop absorbing gas after six half times. I want to help you visualize how a tissue might absorb nitrogen at a diminishing rate. So if we imagine that this blue box is our starting pressure and then we go on a dive, what will actually happen in terms of the absorption of nitrogen? Well, you're going to see a red box appearing which represents uh, nitrogen absorbing into that tissue. So if we start it off, you can see it is absorbing nitrogen very, very rapidly as it reaches uh, one half time, uh, it's halfway. Then it's a little bit slower for the second half time or a little bit less nitrogen going in for the second half time. And after three half times, uh, you see the rate at which the nitrogen is being absorbed is getting slower and slower. After four half times, it's even slower. After half five half times, it's almost in equilibrium, and the rate of absorption is now very, very slow. And then after six half times, we can assume we're close enough to equilibrium to call that tissue as being in equilibrium and no longer absorbing any more nitrogen. So hopefully what you saw there was that the speed of the red box moving was getting slower and slower and slower the closer uh, we got to being fully saturated or back in equilibrium. In order to understand decompression theory uh, as we move on, we now have to give nitrogen some kind of measurement. Uh, we need to be able to describe the amount of nitrogen dissolved in our body uh, so we need to decide on a unit of measurement to describe an amount of nitrogen. The unit we use to describe the amount of nitrogen dissolved is feet of seawater or meters of seawater. Um, now I found this quite hard to get my head around uh, a unit of measurement called feet of seawater. It's important to remember it is just a way to describe an amount like a liter of water or a kilogram of sugar, feet of seawater is the unit of measurement to describe an amount of nitrogen. If you have 20 feet of seawater of nitrogen dissolved in your body and I have 40 feet of seawater of nitrogen dissolved in mine, I have twice as much nitrogen dissolved in my body as you do. It is as simple as that. It is just a unit of measurement. Don't worry too much more about it than that. Now that we have decided on a unit of measurement to describe the amount of nitrogen, we can watch a tissue loading with nitrogen on a dive again, but this time actually apply those units of measurement to the amount of nitrogen dissolved into the tissue as time passes. So it's important to realize that this is the first dive of the day and we weren't diving for a few days before this, so we have zero feet of seawater of nitrogen loading in our body right now and we are doing a dive to 100 feet. So once we reach equilibrium, we will have 100 feet of seawater of nitrogen in our body. The tissue is loading fairly rapidly in the first half time. So after one half time, we have 50 feet of seawater uh, of nitrogen in our body. And in the next half time, we are going to be going halfway again. So we are now going from 50 feet to 100 feet. And we're going to go halfway between that. So in the next half time, we are going to add 25 more feet of seawater of nitrogen to our tissue. We are now on two half times. So the total nitrogen loading after two half times would be 75 feet of seawater of nitrogen. In the next half time, we're going to go halfway again. So after three half times, we have 87.5 feet of seawater of nitrogen in our body. After four half times, 
we would have 93.75 feet of seawater of nitrogen in our body. So these last couple of half times, the amount of nitrogen going into our body is a very, very small amount. After five half times, 96.875 feet of seawater of nitrogen. We are very, very close to being in equilibrium. So the amount of nitrogen now going into this tissue with each half time is becoming very, very small. And you can see that red box just crawling up to the top of the column. And now we are on six half times. As far as decompression theory is concerned, after six half times, we are close enough to equilibrium to call it equilibrium. And in this case, equilibrium would be 100 feet of seawater of nitrogen. Let's imagine ourselves on a dive to 60 feet and watch the nitrogen dissolving into our body. So fairly quickly, in the first half time, we absorb half the amount of nitrogen, 30 feet of seawater. In the second half time, half again, so we would have 45 feet of seawater. After the third half time, half again, 52.5 feet of seawater. After the fourth half time, half again, 56.25 feet of seawater. After the fifth half time, half again, 58.125 feet of seawater and after six half times we would be close enough to call it equilibrium close enough to say we have 60 feet of seawater of nitrogen dissolved in our body it will be much easier to understand what we've just seen in the two previous slides by putting both columns on the same slide next to each other and adding a scale on the left of the screen you can see our scale uh, so those numbers represent nitrogen loading in feet of seawater going from a zero foot of seawater nitrogen loading to a 100 foot of seawater nitrogen loading and by hitting play and watching these two different columns representing two different dive depths loading with nitrogen we will see how the depth of the dive is going to affect the amount of nitrogen that is absor absorbed or dissolved into our body. So on the left hand side uh, we have a dive to 60 foot and on the right hand side we have a dive to 100 foot. As we watch the different tissues loading we have now got to one half time and on the 60 foot dive we have 30 feet of seawater of nitrogen loading and on the 100 foot dive we have 50 feet of seawater of nitrogen loading and it took the same time to reach those two points it's just a different amount of nitrogen because of the uh, different depth of the dive and the second half time we can see the loading continue and now we have uh, 45 feet of seawater of nitrogen on the 60 foot dive and 75 feet of seawater of nitrogen loading on the 100 foot dive and we can watch another half time progress and see that we would now be looking something like this after another half time we are still slowly absorbing nitrogen but we are absorbing nitrogen at an ever decreasing speed because these different tissues or these tissues on different depth dives are getting closer and closer to equilibrium and what we can now see is we have done six half times after six half times on a dive to 60 foot we would have 60 feet of seawater of nitrogen in our bodies after six half times on a dive to 100 feet we would have 100 feet of seawater of nitrogen in our bodies let's just watch that happen without me interrupting it and pausing it for each half time and you can see these tissues absorbing nitrogen at a slower and slower rate uh, the amount of nitrogen that they are absorbing is all dependent on the depth that you are diving to. The 60 foot column is absorbing less nitrogen than the 100 foot column because the 60 foot dive is shallower than the 100 foot dive. So we have now covered half times. In my other videos that are part of this series I will be doing one on compartments and then tying half times and compartments together and looking at m values 
it really is important to watch all three videos to fully understand decompression theory and then you will be able to understand the reason for the WXYZ rule and most importantly easily be able to answer any questions you get on Paddy professional exams regarding Navy tables versus the RDP. By watching this video and all the other videos that you can find on my website www.goprocaribbean.com you will be fully prepared to both sit and pass the Paddy instructor exam dive theory section. I highly recommend that you visit that website and look at the dive theory section. Not only will you find the videos that I post on YouTube, but more importantly, you'll find really useful quizzes that actually test your knowledge and understanding. Uh, and that's what allows you to gauge whether you are ready for the PADI IDC and PADI IE in terms of dive theory or not. If you have found these videos useful, please, when you're posting links to them, if you can post them to my website, www.goprocaribbean.com, and where the video is found there, rather than posting to the YouTube link, that is the best way you can help me. It helps my SEO and helps other people find these videos.